uh, he could do absolute, absolutely anything he wanted to do in his car. Uh, he was like an acrobat, and I mean this uh, in a positive way. I mean, he's one who has a permanent place in our pantheon. Most considered him the best competitor in Formula cars of our time. faces in every race, in every practice period, uh, whenever you're passing another competitor, sometimes you risk, sometimes you don't. A lot of it depends on really who you're passing, who you're trying to, uh, to go for a position with, who the other man is, the location on the track, the conditions of the track. Um, you can never say across the board, yes, this move is always dangerous, no. Today it's dangerous, tomorrow it's not. If you're the type who, the type who risks it, the one thing you have to respect is the lives of others, and on the highway too, not just the track. Uh, and to, to do that properly, you make up some guidelines that you won't break. And the principal golden rule of racing is, at least in my eyes, you've got to remain in your place in the curve and keep your trajectory. There are times when you're passed cleanly and uh, you have a certain admiration for the drivers. There are other times when the man squeezes uh, and does it in a slightly unfair manner. And... Uh, and that part, I think, uh, you, you resent a bit, but uh, uh, you do have a tendency to judge skills on the drivers to the way he makes his passes. Uh, again, there were times when I thought Jill really uh, did as a champion, there were other times where I thought he, he didn't do it so well, and I think that happens to all of us. When you talk about heart in car racing, just look at this move by Gilles Villeneuve. We're at Zandvoort. He's on the outside and past Alan Jones, who's driving the most capable machine on the circuit this year, the Williams. Gilles knew what fair play was. Gilles, Gilles knew when to pass you. He, he never, you knew that you could trust him. He was in control. He was so quick if he was fighting you. A good 99 times out of 100, you could have faith in him to avoid an accident. So you, you, could, you could play with Gilles, but it's very, very rare that you can react to someone like that. Two years ago in Spain, we were dueling very, very hard. He had his turbo Ferrari, and I was having all kinds of trouble trying to pass. In fact, I never did pass, but we were wheel to wheel many times, but I was never afraid. But there are many others not so skilled. I never dare fool with that way. I know they could cut me off or bump me out. Or You have to know how good they are when you're racing. Plus, you, you have to pick the right time to move up. Uh, the opportune time to pass, free from any risk. Their feet is holding out Reuterman, but the latter loses his concentration and forces a crash. That's a real gift for BK and his quest for the title. Uh, it was very obvious when I was away, not racing 70, 80 and 81 that uh, Formula 1 developed in an absolute stupid way. It means the cars, as the rule has been written out, performed so basically you could not drive them properly and the driver was not any more important in it because at some time of the course you just been a passenger, so you couldn't do anything. So I think it was very important to do something. The situation in the car uh, was simply a device that uh, would control the airflow underneath the car. Uh, I was the first one to use that in a racing car with Lotus, and uh, it almost came by accident, but uh, that was the beginning of a new development, uh, what we know as the ground effects. But uh, it was developed later on into uh, almost a monster. I'm kneeling next to Gilles Villeneuve's Ferrari. Last year, this Ferrari had a movable skirt on it. That skirt uh, caused a sort of an air seal under the car. There was a suction cause. It allowed the car to glue itself to the road. Corning was tremendous. They've changed the rules now. This is not movable anymore. That suction is no longer there. The car must be six centimeters off the ground. It is when it comes out of the pits. But 
They've found a way to get around the rule. As soon as the car gets out on the road, the drivers make use of a switch up here in the cockpit. It causes the car to lower down, so it's again adhering to the road. Unfortunately, you have no suspension. People have called them a glorified go-kart. That, in effect, is what they are, and it is dangerous. Hence, it's no longer. They uh, decided to do away with it because the cars aerodynamically became so efficient that uh, they were just playing too quick through the corners. It was uh, just too much downforce, and uh, actually, because of that, I think uh, a lot of the criticism that derived from the driver was the fact that uh, uh, I think the driver's skill was no longer uh, as essential or as important. Uh, the other problem with these cars is that they have no suspension. Gilles uh, often used to say to me, my head gets bounced around so much I can't see anything in front of me. And in corners, the, the, the skirts wouldn't permit any, uh, they completely eliminated skidding, but Gilles, he uh, was a master at it. Uh, he complained curves he used to take in third gear, he could now take full out. There was no skill involved with really. It was very important what Jill did and some other drivers, unfortunately not older drivers, is to change the regulation and fight them. And as the politics in Formula 1 is a very big problem, so we had to have a very long fight with uh, Schill at the time, did a lot for it, and in the end we could win the fight. So the regulation for the next year season is so that the cars are acceptable again and much safer. I feel that there are more, more human to drive. Uh, since they put the skirts away and the way the formula, now for 83, the formula uh, is better. Gilles would be glad to see this. Um, loss of the big track adherence, so the power is up again too. The fact that I am Gilles' replacement here in Formula One is a challenge and a motivation. He always showed himself a determined racer and a generous spirited human being. And he makes, he makes a good model for me. But it is difficult to follow him. He creates more pressure for me to be his replacement. But I must do it, even if the world will watch my performances and always be making these uh, comparisons to him. But there is only one Gilles Villeneuve. The cars of the 50s were, were quite different to the 80s because they were very much more, much more sensitivity because the road holding wasn't as good. When you take a car like, like this Jag, you could feel when it was getting near to the limit and it depended on your ability as to what action you took. Whereas I think car, modern cars, particularly with ground effect, uh, you didn't get near the warning that uh, we got with these type of cars. I can't judge because I've never driven one of the modern day cars. But I can say that in my era, it was 75% the car and the technicians, and 25% luck and the driver. I think the talent is not more or less to drive a modern car. I think it is different. I think there is equal talent in one or the other. I do believe that the standard of talent overall is higher today than it ever was. In other words, if you take the top 20 men in 1980 or 83 or whenever, that is higher than the, than the top 20 men of 1950 or 60, as an average. But I don't necessarily think that the very best is any better than what it was before. <laughs>